the 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 technique the ability that he has uh developed over a very short window it's it's one of the most amazing stories in in football in in the entire league not just the eagles it's one of the most amazing stories i'm going to be blunt in in nfl history All right, you got the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365, a football Friday, except no football. No Eagles football this weekend. Oh, there's football. And I double-checked. I went to the guide on my uh, Comcast uh, server here, and it said, uh, Sunday, 1 o'clock, Fox game, Washington football team against the Dallas Cowboys, as if there was going to be any chance of anything else uh, airing here in Philadelphia. No, they're smart enough over at Fox Philadelphia to put the Cowboys and the Washington football team on. Uh, So, yes, I assume most Eagle fans will be tuned to that. Maybe you'll be gathering in groups like I suggested the Eagle coaching staff should be, but or you'll be individually watching it at your homes. However, everybody should be tuned to the Washington football team and the Cowboys. All right couple of things before I still need to run a couple of Eagle players mid three quarter season grades by you. We did a couple on Wednesday. We did a couple more yesterday. I got a couple more to go with you here, John, uh, today. But first things first, um, the player that has been the biggest pleasant surprise to me, I think that's a slam dunk winner. It's got to be Jordan Mailata. We all had hope that he's he's been so good that I think here's the another example of how fans can get forgetful pretty quickly. We're only like four months removed from uh, a a battle at the left tackle position that it was going to be Andre first round Dillard who certain people in the organization will probably be trying to elevate because he was a first-round draft pick and they invested time and money and effort into him as compared to this seventh-round almost throwaway pick that they were using on Jordan Mulata. It was a nice, fun narrative story of the kid who never played before, who has shown progress, who the offensive line coach likes a lot. And now he's playing like a pro bowler. Everyone's like, well, of course, Jordan Mulata. Five months ago, nobody was saying that. Who said five months ago? Oh, and by the way, Jordan Mailata, starting left tackle, playing on a Pro Bowl level. Nobody. Nobody would say Jordan's parents weren't saying that. So that is. You're right. And by the way, I'll take people back to training camp. If if they remember, which clearly they do not remember, the Eagles were rotating each day. Correct. uh, Who would start at left tackle during first team drills. Andre Dillard was first. He had the first day, and they kept going, and people kept saying Jordan, and he was. Jordan was outperforming Andre, but they kept doing it. They kept doing it, and Andre would get his day, and he would. they were defaulting to Andre Dillard. Then he got hurt, and then it kind of ended it, and, and Jordan just took off and played at such a high level. And the beauty about, you know, more so, and I agree with you, it would have been Jordan Mylotta for me, but I just sprung that on Ed. He might think of it. I would also take TJ Edwards uh, on the defensive side as well. But um, when it comes to Jordan, this is the thing that blows my mind. You know, Andre Dillard is the first round pick, as you mentioned. We all know the high level. Everybody loved him. And people can kill the Eagles for the pick. Believe me, they weren't the only team that graded Andre Dillard as a first round pick. He was going to be a first round pick. In fact, the Eagles were surprised he fell to him. And that's why they. They jumped. They didn't even do a lot of uh, background on Andre Dillard because they thought there's no way he's going to be in our position. Um, He was a very highly regarded uh, potential draft pick. Um, And when they had their issues with Lane Johnson and Lane had some uh, personal issues, uh, who do they kick over to the right side when he gets healthy? Not Andre Dillard, because Andre Dillard can't play the right been, side. Been the there guy, done that. The guy who couldn't put on his helmet, he goes, yeah, mate, I'll go play right tackle. I'll go back to left tackle. Uh, amazing, amazing story. And everybody's written about it, but I just don't think people comprehend how unbelievable this is, that where he is as a player 
uh, in this particular league, starting from ground zero. And when I mean ground zero, ground zero. So we talked about Jeff Stoutland bringing along the Jack Driscoll's of the world, the Nate Herbig's of the world. Uh, you know, that's unbelievable. To do it with somebody who's never played before? I, I mean, the physical gifts are obviously the key to it all. I mean, there aren't too many six foot eight, 380 pound guys in the world who can move like Jordan Mailata. But still, the, the, the technique, the ability that he has uh, developed over a very short window, it's, it's one of the most amazing stories in, in football, in, in the entire league, not just the Eagles. It's one of the most amazing stories, I'm going to be blunt, in, in NFL history. G- give me another example of somebody starting from scratch at his age and being arguably certainly a top five left tackle. And you might even go higher than that. And to add to that uh, storyline and narrative, get out and vote. Uh, can you vote for the pro board NFL.com voting still ongoing, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, get there and do the right thing and vote for your left tackle. Cause he has played to a pro bowl level this year and he should get that kind of acknowledgement. All right. I want to acknowledge one other guy slash thing actually two people as a matter of fact um so after going out and partying with you at uh screwballs last night mcmullen had a beer i had a diet coke let that be uh noted i had He's, two beers i was gonna beer. leave you at one but if you're yeah. being completely truthful I'm, I'm, McMullen I'm completely, had two beers yeah. i had none i had diet coke yeah. anyway uh guy how much he ended a football game got to bed by midnight get up 6 15 to get ready to do the show here bringing the dog back in from the first walk of the day at 7 15 and I see out my front door, someone's coming up to my porch. 7.15 a.m. Yeah, I don't like What the that. hell? Nobody's yeah. up. It's me and the dog. The wife's still sound asleep. There's not a peep in the house. And there's somebody walking up to the front door. And, like, I just waited for the knock, and it never came. About 20 seconds later, I see the person through the glass and right near the front door walking away. So I go out, and I see the car parked in front of the house. It's got a big Amazon placard on it. So I look down and sure enough, there's a delivery sitting there right on the front mat or whatever. And the kid, the, the kid, I don't know, he, he probably was in yeah. his 20s, but wasn't, wasn't an older gentleman, um, took advantage of my wife's uh, good nature. She puts a basket out on our front porch that includes like Nestle's Crunch, Heath Bars, stuff like that says for all you delivery people because god damn it the amazon people show up at my house twice a day every day oh yeah Uh, i'm with you please feel free to take something uh stay safe thank you very much and it's a really nice thing to do my wife does it every year at the holidays and uh i'm proud to be my uh wife's husband in that aspect um but (laughs) but the guy has delivered a package at 7 15 in the morning nestle crunch and he's well, taking a yeah. Nestle Crunch with him. What the hell's going on in this world that you're getting stuff delivered at 7.15 on a Friday morning? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. You know what freaks me out? Because at this time of year, and, and especially, you know, in, in this time of society and the pandemic and all that, and everybody, there's so much more deliveries. Uh, and, you know, we do this show from our homes, obviously. Not a studio. Well, doing, I, I'm doing it from the ocean casino. Yeah. What are you o- talking ocean about, McMullen? Casino. That's a good point. Uh, made another mistake. A lot of rookie mistakes. I'm Nick Sirianni today. But um, yeah, it, 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 sometimes what freaks me out is they have they have so much work. These delivery people, they show up in their personal cars, like they don't have enough truck. And I'm like, who's this guy walking up to my house? I'm with you. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? No, I think it was a Ford Fiesta that dropped off the package in my house yeah, today. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Who's coming to get me? You know, I always have some kind of weird, what have I done now? Well, I blacked out on my two beers. Lord knows what I did, Jenny. That's funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. I do like that idea, though, you, that your wife does. That's very Yeah, she nice. takes care I of the like people. That. And the guy got a Netflix I, I feel fit. Those... 
Those guys are work to the bone. Working man. for a living. Yeah. All right, a uh, couple of things. Randy Mueller's going to join us coming up here in 10 minutes or so, uh, former NFL exec. A uh, couple of guys I wanted to get your grade on. We did a bunch of guys Wednesday, a couple more yesterday. Um, but there were a few guys that uh, I haven't gotten to yet that I do want to see your grade on them for this year. What would you grade Quez Watkins at? Um, mm, 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 let me think about that one. Um, C plus. I, I I'm not as high on Quez as some people are. Right, I, and, you know, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, it it depends to me on what your preseason expectations were. Because if you go all the way back to before training camp started, then you might be in the B minus area or the B area for Quez Watkins. If you go yeah, from the start of the season yeah. after he had a good camp, made a couple of plays, caught that one uh, wide receiver screen, went to the house, uh, 80 yards, you might have had a little higher expectation. So it all depends on where you want to yeah take everything your... is how are you going to grade on your particular curve right. and what is my particular curve in this instance i'm looking at what is he for this team what he is unfairly probably is the wide receiver too he's number two that's his job that's his role how is he as a wide receiver too in the nfl not great um now, if you want to take it from your path and say, well, he's a six-round pick, he shouldn't be the wide receiver too, he's he's uh, playing in a position he's probably not ready for, and maybe you want to take that curve, you can go a little bit higher. But I'm just going to – hey, the coaches say you're dressed, you're ready to play, that's your role, that's your role. In his role, he's a below-average NFL player as a wide receiver too in the NFL. I think we'd all agree with that. At least most people aren't putting the Eagles blinders on. So that's kind of how maybe it's not fair, but that's kind of how I, how I get to that. Right. But if you again pick it, it depends on where you're picking it up from. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to be the wide receiver too. No. The wide receiver too is supposed to be that Rager and, guy. And that's he why he gets an even the worse guy. Three. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, still, I would say he's not. I think the Eagles have to improve at both wide receiver. If they're going to play 11 personnel, which is what Nick wants to do, it's Devontae Smith and you got to find two, two other options. And it's not to say Quez Watkins can improve and eventually become uh, that number three guy. And maybe he's better. Uh, with less on this plate and that lesser role, and maybe that fits together if you eventually get the real number two, because we see that domino effect at times. Maybe that helps him. Um, that's where I am kind of with the quest. He's, he's been put into that position, and he's probably not ready for that position. All right, one more guy I want to get a grade on uh, from you. What kind of season, in your eyes, has Rodney McLeod had? Um, I don't, I don't think Rodney has played that well. I don't think he's played up to his standard. Typically. Um, I think Marcus Epps has been the Eagles best safety and, you know, he, he keeps getting more and more playing time, but they really value Rodney's leadership and, and Anthony Harris for that matter. So I think there's some intangibles, uh, but I, I don't think Rodney has played up to what he typically, and I think he'd be the first to say that. And he's coming off a torn ACL, and that's part of it. Um, but I, you know, from that standpoint, but I think he offers some of that leadership and some of those intangibles. And and I think it's not just about on the field with him. He's the guy breaking down the huddle pregame every every game now. He he is a real leader of this team. So, um, but I would say B minus would be my quarter pole that doesn't exist grade for I, I, I might even go C plus, but because of the point that you made, because of the leadership role that he fills on his team, plain and simple, yay or nay, thumbs up, thumbs down. Rodney McLeod back with the Eagles next year. I don't think he's going to be back next year. I think they want to get younger. Um, I don't think either 
uh, Rodney or Anthony Harris are going to be back next year. And that depends on what, look, are you getting Kyle Hamilton in the draft? Then they're both definitely not going to be back. Um, so a lot depends on what happens and what you can do. Maybe they want one of those two back because um, you do need some veteran leadership, but certainly both aren't going to be back. And boy, if they can get Kyle Hamilton, that would change uh, my thought process real, real quickly. Oh, we'll talk plenty about Mr. Hamilton over the next six months because that's how far we got the way till the draft, or at least five. Um, we got a whole bunch of football games to play, four to be exact, between now and the end of the season. Will the Eagles get a fifth as a playoff team? What do they have to do these last four weeks of the season? From an executive standpoint, we'll check into that next. Former NFL executive Randy Mueller is going to join us here on Birds 365. 